One of the earliest examples of successful conservation tillage adaptation and adoption in California has occurred within the dairy silage production sector. My name is Michael Kroll. I've been in the family dairy business for 1900. My son, uh, Adam here, he runs the dairy. He's, he is the dairyman. I'm still doing the farming. We're milking uh, right at 650 cows, and then we also have all the dry cows and support stock here as well. California dairies rely on the year-round production of silage materials for feed and traditional feed stocks like the winter small grains, wheat, and triticale, and summer corn and sorghum are quite amenable to conservation tillage practices because planting equipment for these crops is readily available and has been widely used and developed in several other areas. Better than 60% of the cost of dairying is feed inputs. And so when you look at what you're gonna grow for yourself, you wanna narrow those costs and at the same time not trade anything off in terms of quality or quantity. Adam and I are in the no-till farming business and it requires a whole lot less equipment and, um, and time. Dad first brought up the idea of, of doing this. If it worked, like we're hoping, the obvious advantage was the savings just on the fuel and the equipment and the labor. Adopting conservation tillage practices for Central Valley dairy silage production systems serves a number of purposes. Tillage costs are cut typically by about $70 per acre. Time is saved, and the turnaround period between crops in a rotation is shortened by having fewer intercrop tillage operations to perform. My name is Dino Giacomazzi, and I'm a fourth generation dairy farmer in Hanford, California. We're milking 900 Holstein cows and farming just under 1,000 acres of silage crops for the cows and alfalfa. Probably the most important things that we've learned about converting from a conventional farming system to you know a conservation farming system which includes strip till is is understanding that it's a whole new system and a whole different way of thinking about farming a strip tiller is an implement that manages to do multiple things in one pass it's doing sort of vertical till where you have a shank like a ripper shank that's tilling and breaking up the compaction layer You've got these uh, wavy coulters in the back that are shattering the dirt and creating kind of a disking type of effect. And then you've got these rollers in the back that are flattening out the strip. Our cycle is basically winter wheat comes off, we strip till, irrigate, plant corn, then we uh, take the corn crop off, spread manure, incorporate the manure with a light disking pass, and then plant wheat, and, and that's it. What we used to do in 11 passes we're now doing in two. That's a huge reduction. Research conducted by University of California investigators with dairy silage producer partners suggests that fuel can be reduced by 50% and dust emissions can be decreased by over 60% using no-till or strip-till practices for silage production. My name's Tom Barcellus. The conversion to CT programs, the way we've incorporated it, is actually very minimal. Um, if you're going to strip till, you can still strip till and use a conventional planter uh, with maybe one minor adjustment. You may want to put a, uh, a coulter on the front of it, uh, but we use basically the same style of equipment. We run the strip till bar. We have our, our planter set up that it can go no-till or conventional. And then we also have a no-till drill, but our equipment portfolio has actually shrank considerably from where it used to be when we had to have multiple discs lister bars, chisels, uh, cultivators, uh, and a wide array of various other equipment. After the second year, we had an auction, sold all of our big equipment, just sold it, said, that's it. So we're not rolling any big equipment. We're not out there with any rippers. We're not out there with any discs. We're not out there with any chisels. As we're finding out, when you put the time into it to understand it, there's definitely potential there to be successful at no-till. When you can dig in this soil, and you see earthworms just everywhere. To me, you see, this is beautiful soil because you smell it. It has that wonderful earthly smell, and you look at all the organic matter in there, and that's all food for the next plant. And we have seen increased uh, quality of feed. On the uh, corn, our quality in recent years has been better than it's ever been. As we look at this field here, it's already been strip-tilled. We have a nice small band of perfectly tilled soil that's got excellent moisture. The strip tiller did not raise too much soil. 
it's set just exactly right and when the planter comes back through and plants it's going to be exactly level and it'll be perfect for germination for irrigation and most important it'll be perfect for chopping later on because all the ground is level we're producing more crops now with less input which is definitely a win-win this is a typical john deere planter but it's been modified in a couple of ways careful advanced planning and preparations are needed for a successful transition from standard tillage intensive management to conservation tillage silage production plan well ahead and have clear goals in mind before starting converting to ct requires entire systems changes it is more than just inserting a piece of equipment Ripping areas of the field, such as corners and edges, where implement traffic patterns have been heavy and where subsoil compaction may be, an initial condition risk may be useful. In addition, because CT silage systems are essentially flat without raised beds, making sure the fields are optimally leveled or graded for efficient water movement is critical before getting started. Ponded water and low spots and difficulties moving water across uneven CT fields are problems to avoid by planning and preparation. Field configurations and irrigation berm spacing need to take into account the width of planting equipment that will be used. Following the chopping and harvest of winter small grain silage, most CT silage producers then strip till using GPS to align their rows and then follow with a pre-irrigation and seeding. Aligning the strip tiller with the planter using GPS is critical. Research has shown that when alignment is off by only a couple of inches, problems with stand establishment and root growth can occur. Timely herbicide sprays are critical. CT silage farmers now recognize the need to spray early, often within a week of seeding to keep weeds down. Lastly, it is common to need to irrigate earlier than with conventional tillage systems. Pay attention to crop needs, ET demand, and soil water content to make sure irrigations are timely. I happen to know that every farmer that is in, involved in this process is more than willing to share their experience. I've offered anybody, anytime, to come and to talk about what they want to do and how they want to do it. I'll give them any input, you know, I'll be more than glad to. You know, when you compare no-till or, or minimum till to conventional farming program. You just can't compare the two when it comes to environment and cost savings. We've been at it about six years. I'm fascinated by it. I'm truly, I'm, a, I'm hooked. I'm hooked on no-till. It has all these benefits. They just become more and more visible every year. Additional information about these innovative conservation agriculture systems for dairy silage production is available on the Conservation Agriculture Systems Innovation website.